Hey students, I'm just going to do a quick little walkthrough for those who are on part 2, 2.2. Um, thank you Jalen for generously letting me use her model for this demonstration. So for 2.2, what we want you to do is to start taking these words that you've created, these 3D cubes, and start subtracting pieces from it. When you think of subtraction, you think of eating away from an object. You're taking away a piece, which starts creating voids. So that's what you are going to do with your model. We're going to start creating voids. One, to create a dynamic shape, but also two, remembering that we will be building this out of cardboard. So you want to make sure that it's able to stand on its own. So don't steal away too many pieces from the bottom or the top where it starts deforming and you're unable to create it <laughs> physically. The one thing to remember about architecture is not only the abstractness, the creativity, but also the buildability, the buildability. So starting off, we will have our 3D 6 by 6 square and we will start creating places where we want to extrude. So this is where your creativity takes place. I am not giving you any formal direction on where you would start cutting out your pieces. The only thing I would ask is that you try to create a consistency in how deep you cut it. You can cut all the way through, you can cut two inches, four inches, six inches. Just like how we did the extrusion in project one, you can also use that same method to extrude for project two. You also can use your grid lines if you only wanna cut out a fourth of an inch, a half an inch, or just one inch. So this is all your discretion. So. We'll start using the point tool and you can start playing around with where you would want to start extruding. You can extrude from either side or even from the top. So we're going to turn this to wireframe so that we can see through and we will start placing our points. So I want to start extruding or subtracting around this part. So I could do multi points or regular points if you want to keep so that you know what you're doing but you can do multi points so you can place more than one so i'm going to do it to here the lines that we created in part one are our guide so then i would take the polyline and then draw the completed shape connecting these points you want to avoid drawing directly because there is no guarantee that you might hit the spots. If you can, kudos to you, but to be safe, draw your points first and then connect them with the polyline. Once you've done that, you would click on the curve and we will use the extrusion by planar curve that we use in project one. And we, instead of, sorry, instead of extruding it outward, like we did in project one, we'll actually be extruding it into our cube. So for here, I want to extrude it as deep as here. So using my lines on top as a guide to how far I want to extrude it, I want to go as deep as this line. So now when I orbit around, and when you look at it in left view, you see how deep it is and how it actually lines up with one of our existing grid lines. It might not always be the case, but it does show uniformity and how you can use your construction lines to start creating shapes. So in top view, this is what it looks like. Side view, front view, and an extrusion, it looks like this. So now what we want to do here is we're going to click on this new extrusion we've made, copy, and 
select the corner and move it from that point. You can hold shift to keep it straight and you can type in the distance so that you know how far you're extruding it. At some point you'll notice that some places will overlap too much and some extrusion points won't give you that variety. So in this instance we'll do six inches. Press escape and now we have two pieces, one that's in our cube and one that's extended from our cube. The reason for doing this is because now we want to subtract this piece from our cube. So we're going to change this to shaded. We can't really see what we just made because there's a box around it. But when we click on our cube and come here to Boolean, click the arrow, and Boolean difference, this is when we start subtracting pieces from our box. It'll ask you to select the surface you want to subtract with. So the cube, the extrusion that we just made, that's when we want to extract from our existing cube. And when we press enter after selecting it, it has now carved out a piece from our cube. This is what subtraction looks like. And you're going to do this throughout your throughout your model on multiple sides. You can do it from the top as well. I'm just showing an example of how you would go about it. The same process will be done on the top. So create a pattern, create a system. You want your words to shine through with whatever pieces you start pulling, whether it's at the corner, in the center, or just on the edges. It's completely up to you. Once you've done that, once you've done that, Once you've done that, you will go to File, oh, whoops. you will go to Line, not Polyline, you will go to Line, and you will start pull, bringing these back. Hold Shift and start bringing them back to where you extruded it from. This is starts to go into that exploded axon. Exploded axons are used to kind of show how you got from point A to point B. And also can be used to show how deep these extrusions go. Because when you start populating it with the multiple pieces that you pull, you'll start seeing, oh, this looks like it might come from somewhere else. It's, it's a diagrammatical element but it shows the consideration to how you got from point A to point B without using words. So you will connect every line that you make back to the shape that you extruded. You're gonna have to rotate a few times 
orbit so that you can line it up precisely. So in this situation, I made a irregular shape. I prefer, and for you, I would prefer everyone making instead of this among us creature, you would rather make the two rectangles and the square. Because then you can start playing around with those depths. So instead of it all being one layer, it can now be these ones are shallow, but this one's a lot deeper. Okay, so once that is created, you would then Change this, set view, ISO in this situation, minus southeast. Basically, in the end, it should look a lot like the example that Professor Matt gave us digitally. So it should look a lot like this. So you can delete these grid lines also in Rhino, so if you don't have need for them anymore, you can also delete them here. If they were their own layer, it would be a lot faster. If they're not, no worries. You can just go in, click, and delete. Not a problem until you have a smooth edge. Blah, blah, blah. We all make mistakes. Control-Z will be your best friend in this instance. If you run into issues where some lines won't delete, it's always best to be safe. For instance, these lines are hidden lines. And these in the center are part of the grid. So be wary of that. But you can start seeing it looks a lot neater and you can see a lot more of what it is. So if you make 2D of this, it'll be a lot cleaner in presentation as opposed to this. So give it a try. Uh, this video is kind of long, but give it a try, play around with it, and feel free to send me screenshots. Feel free to send me screenshots of this if you have any questions and we can work from there. Alrighty, thank you and have a great day.